Welcome, it's Taskmaster, it's episode eight. I'm Greg Davis. Sweet, sweet eye candy for your mum and your auntie. <laughs> Five funny clowns have been battling it out over several episodes now. Some have proved themselves surprisingly resourceful. Others have made their families worry about whether they're looking after themselves. One and one alone will lift a papier mache trophy into the air and shout, This! I went through all that for this! <laughs> Let us meet the jesters on the battlefield of the absurd. They are Ardlo Hanlon, <laughs> Bridget Christie, Chris Ramsey, Judy Love, and Sophie Juca. And next to me, a man who cries every time he watches Free Willy and who freezes Willy every time he cries. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. All right? Yes, I've got new shoes. Feeling confident. You like oh. them? Well, they're better than your usual plastic slip-ons, I yeah. suppose. They're very nice. They're quite tall. <laughs> quite tall. Where do you think they end, Greg? Where do you think oh, they end? Just, I've just, made you little windows. I've, I've made you little windows. Those, yes. Yeah. Do you think they come up to, to my shin, Greg? Do you want to open the window? <laughs> I thought you like this. Yeah, the, the shoes are still going. <laughs> Do you want to look at the knee? Yep. See if they're still... They can't be still yep. going. They're still going. <laughs> oh, they can't be up the thigh. Do you want to have a little look, Greg? Yes. There, yeah. yeah. Very thigh-high boots, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on with the show, shall we? Yes, here we go. It's prize task time. And this prize task time, they've all brought in the loveliest thing to hold above your head. Hmm? Greg will give five points for the thing that he thinks is the loveliest to hold above your head, and then tonight's winner will take home five things that are lovely to hold above your head. That's it. Sophie Duker, what have you brought in, please? I bought a teeny, tiny trophy. <laughs> Here it is. Now, this is it compared to a mighty trophy. There we go, it is <laughs> a teeny, tiny trophy. Now, that sort of endears me to it a little bit. Yeah. It's a teeny tiny trophy that I won the very first time I did stand up in a stand up competition. And they bulk bought teeny tiny trophies. <laughs> they gave it to anyone <laughs> who believed in herself enough to get up on the stage and do two minutes of teeny tiny trophy worthy material. That is quite cute. And that's what I did. Yeah. And it got an R from the audience, yeah. which is very clever. <laughs> Chris. Something meaningful to hold above your head? Yes. Now, we all know the best thing to hold above your head is your hands. You can wave them in the air like you just don't care. <laughs> this yeah. is worse than teeny tiny trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I've brought in the un-untuckable shirt. Here it is, the un-untuckable shirt. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting to get turned on this early in the show. <laughs> That, the that shirt, is horrendous. The shirt is sewn directly onto the underpants and it is impossible to untuck. The self-confidence I would feel would be lovely, knowing that my big belly's not going to fall out, <laughs> followed by my awful genitals. <laughs> I feel like you're tucking in too far into the wrong <laughs> uh, so, OK, it might not be lovely, but it is... It is very practical and does genuinely appeal to me. <laughs> <sighs> Judy. I went for a lovely fan. Yes, Judy's brought in a fan. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the obvious thing to do with that <laughs> is to hold it aloft above one's head. <laughs> well, it's... When you get... Look, you know how hot you get cos you're hot, right? <laughs> Imagine if in the most... Hottest time of your life. You I think all I can do with a fan over but, my oh, head. I'm holding it above my own. Yeah, head. you know that moment <laughs> when you're walking and the aircon hits you. You the hold that fan helping. too high, you are going to untuck your shirt. It's going to be terrible. <laughs> do you know what would go well with that? One point. <laughs> <laughs> Ardle, only you can uh, help Judy out. <laughs> Loveliest thing to hold above your head is a <laughs> table tennis bat. <laughs> you are back in the game. 
<laughs> yeah. He has brought that in, and there it is. It's a table tennis paddle or bat. Well, it's a, a great <laughs> way of making friends. <laughs> <laughs> Like, let's say you're at a railway station. OK. And you, you hold the table tennis bat above your head, you will quickly attract <laughs> followers. <laughs> they will think that you're some sort of a tour guide and they will join in and you can bring them places and you can certainly get to the front of the queue at, at a museum. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Arvel. Bridget. Oh. I have brought in a handmade lace parasol that was made by a neighbour for her child. When her child was young, she accidentally... Um, they went to the beach and it burnt a bit. The, 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 child. the child. She hadn't put she had some block and stuff on. So she made a parasol for the child when it was younger. And then when I had my children, she said, Would you like this for yours? Here is the vintage parasol. Beautiful. Oh. Lovely. Oh, it is nice. It's lovely, isn't it? You can it? spin that behind you as well. Yeah, but when you walk around with that parasol above your head, like, do hundreds of tourists follow you? <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty straightforward as far as I'm concerned. Ardell can thank me for one point for his bat. One. Two points for a fan that helps no one is the most generous thing I've ever done. <laughs> uh, just because it doesn't really go uh, fully above your head, but I do so admire and want it, I'll give three points to um, the pants shirt combination. And then there will be a jump up because of the emotional content. <laughs> I've got to take five points each. OK, so it's five points to Sophie and Bridget! Yeah! <laughs> I'd like a fresh task, please. Certainly, and we're going global with this one because it's time to find out who's the best e-test. <laughs> Pop idol. Yes, thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh no. Swedish. Learn Swedish. Oh shit and hell. So you'll have a five-minute conversation with the Swedish person in 15 minutes from now. The phrase book and tablet must remain in the caravan. Best demonstration of the Swedish language wins. Your time starts when you first said. Swedish. What? So it already started? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Learn the language. Yes. How long do they have? 15 minutes, but it is a category one language, Swedish. It's as easy as French or Spanish to English speakers. Oh, thank you. Well, move over, Punch and Judy. Make way for Judy and Chris. Here we go. dax has got to be thank you. Oh! Tank. 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 Hey, do. Goodbye. <laughs> Boom! Nay. 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 Five out of six? If he says them words, I'm laughing my head off. Arr? 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 Oh, no, yeah. Arr? Eh? Sorry? Please come and talk to a Swedish person. Oh, man. Judy, we have to go and talk to a Swedish person now. OK. Oh, I was wondering how he wouldn't be here. OK. I'm good with iPads. OK, Judy, your five minutes starts now. Hey, Joe. Hey. Uh... Hey. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot it all. Ville Somali, England. Chris Joy out there. Ville Somali, England. Hmm. Hungry? Um, uh, immoral. Oh, uh, little trot. Little trot. Yeah, little trot. Oh, um, mm. some I have. <laughs> hey, Judy. Yeah, it's a Fredrik. Is he still there? Yes, he's still there, Chris. Good, uh, mar 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 moron? Good morning. Good morning. The board is for store. Football. Football. Yeah. Don't like it. 
Hej Dia. Hej då. Hej Dua. Super. Youtube är super. Hungrig. Ja, okay. Hungrig. Tack. Be hej, be gay hej, be hej. You lost, you lost confidence through a few key phrases, I thought. Well, look, you know, he ended up saying super to me. Yeah, and you replied, you tuper super. <laughs> <laughs> Are we 100% sure that Chris established that um, he was hungry? <laughs> I did ask him a couple of times. He was he dodged the question actually, which I mm. thought was bad on his part. I thought good moron was a terrible mistake, but in fact it was correct. It was correct. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I've got to say I didn't think it was a total disaster. Exactly. Okay. I mean, it was no holding a ping pong bat above the head, was it? <laughs> uh, let's go. Who's next? Okay. Yes, by genuinely popular demand, Fred's back, and next to speed learn Swedish, are Ardell and Sophie. Strumming. Jag leder dig efter strömming. Thank you. Tack. Tack. Great. Tack. Tack, tack, tack. I want to be cool. Läget. Hey, läget. What's up? Jag är hungrig. Hummer, do. That's your time up, Sophie. It's, yes. Please follow me, Ardell. OK. How's your Swedish now? It's really great. Ardell, you've got five minutes. The time starts now. OK. Hey. Vel Välkommen till Taskmaster. Tack. Vad heter du? Jag heter Fred. Hej Fred. Uh, ja, jag heter uh, Sven. Sven. Sven Johansson. <laughs> jag är gravid. Grattis då, får jag väl säga. Let's go. Cool, Grattis. cool. Fred, Fred, Fred. Fred, uh, jag är uh, hungrig. Ja, jag letar efter strömming. 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 Är, är du strömming? Är, är, är du strömming? Nej, strömming. Åh. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Vill du ha... Mm. Um, McDonalds? Mm, nej, inte, inte McDonalds. Okej. Fred, 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 Fred. Finns det något strälje där man kan ora svensk folksmusik? Det är så roligt och för och full. Och så vi är skinnor angla. Och vill inte ner sig och stå i kull. Och låt oss bli ordna angla. Ja, bra. Hej då. Hej då. Thank you, um, the song, yeah. I mean, where the hell did that come from? I was in Sweden once, and um, I was outside a railway station with a table tennis ball. <laughs> and I uh, met some people who worked in the Volvo factory, and... <laughs> We ended up going out to a pub, and uh, by the end of the night, we were singing Swedish drinking songs. So, <laughs> as it turned out, I could speak Swedish all along. <laughs> Let's not overshadow Sophie's superb attempt. I think you may have gone in quite hard by announcing you were pregnant. Yeah, um, I think he was really uh, reluctant to take accountability for that. <laughs> And at the back of the phrase book, it was useful things to say if you find yourself in Sweden. Yeah, I'm pregnant. Yes. <laughs> but your pronunciation was um, pretty good. Mm -hmm. I just think you, you formed a bad relationship <laughs> with this. He wasn't forming good relationships with anyone. He was stuck up there. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't kept trying to tell me about football, wouldn't tell you he was hungry or not. He's a horrible man. Right. <laughs> Finally. It's everyone's favourite period drama comedian. It's Bridgerton Christie. Hey. Hey. Hang on a sec. You okay, Bridget? Yeah, I'm just ringing my brother. Oh, you know. Hey, Jim. Hi. I'm oh, sorry to ring you out of the blue. I've got to talk to a Swedish person. Would you help me? 
Absolutely. Thanks. Nothing sweet of note, so no problem. What shall I say? Um, Has there been any things happening there? You just say, what are some hen the middle of the year? What hen the sen the hon the min in them? What are the some hen the mid of the year? Bra fråga. Det är en väldigt bra fråga. Det är det som är på hyschen för tillfället, verkligen, här i Sverige. Oh. What, what was that then, Jim? Well, you asked him what's happening with the Prime Minister, uh, because he's got a, a lack of confidence vote against him today. Oh! So um, it's a very, very topical question you put there, Bridge. Well done. What do you think I should ask next? Vembley Nesta Stats Minister. Is that a question or is it a statement? It's a question, yeah. Oh. Det är frågan. Jag har ingen aning. He said, that's definitely a question to ask. He said, I've got no idea. Should we make it a bit lighter? You could say, Hon jätte trevlig midsommar. Hon jätte trevlig midsommar. Tack så mycket. Detsamma. He said, thanks very much and the same to you. Tack. Hej då. Hej då. Tack. Oh, bye-bye. Jimmy, thank you so much. Do you think it's fair? Let's, let's get this debate out of the way with. The actual wording is best demonstration of the Swedish language wins. And I guess she did demonstrate the Swedish language, it just wasn't from her mouth. I thought it was quite a clever thing to do, bringing your brother in. Well, it's quite clever to have a brother who lives in Sweden. And, well, and he's never available. <laughs> Should we deal with the lower ranking members? Yes, I think that's a good idea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Are you hungry? Because <laughs> I've got a delicious point for you. <laughs> One point to Chris. Yes. Now, the second... Between... Hi, guys. OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's much, much easier this way, isn't it, Chris? <laughs> much easier than I thought. Here's your delicious two points. Right. Thank you. Horn Greg. <laughs> I actually thought that Sophie was had a great deal of potential mm. until she got bogged down into a pregnancy narrative. <laughs> right, so three, three to points. Sophie. So it's between the folk singer um, Ardle takes it. OK. Yeah. There's four to... Chris, <laughs> five to Ardle Helen! Can I have the series scores? Yeah, OK, well, it's interesting. Judy's at the bottom with 106. Ardle's gone up a bit to 112, and then it gets tight. Chris is now in third place on 120. Bridget, 121. Sophie, 127. <gasps> Six points between the top two. <gasps> and in this episode... Judy on four, Chris on four, but at the top, it's Bridget with nine points. And what have you got for me now, my hairy chum? Hello, it's your absolute favourite. It's a really disgusting task. Mm. Lab. Back in the lab. Here we are. I like this. Yeah, well, they match your outfit. Yeah. Do you like everything? Well, uh, I, I don't know what that is yet. <laughs> Stick your tongue out as far as it will go and keep it out until further notice. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to read you the next bit of the task. Oh. Please, can your tongue stay out? Right, so it's going to stay like that now, Chris. Mm -hmm. I've got an abnormally short tongue. Is that really as far as it goes? Mm, you're discriminating it. I'm not. I'm just commenting on it. No, you are. Whoa. <laughs> Big one. Yeah. Every time Alex blows his whistle, you must lick the lemon, then the sherbet, then the ice lolly. Uh -huh. Every time Alex honks his horn, you must hold your tongue in front of the fan for five seconds. The tongue that sticks out for the longest time wins. Uh, Do you understand the tongue? Uh huh. <laughs> is that really how big your tongue is? Oh! <laughs> no such problem with Sophie. Yours is uh, impressive. Yeah. Is it, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is one person's got a tiny tongue, one person's got a massive one. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's We're all on, different. Let's get on with the task. Yes. <laughs> Although, before we do, I do have to apologise for this task. If you don't like human spittle... Oh, God. Oh. Genuinely, it might be worth looking away oh, occasionally. Oh, my God. <laughs> don't you dare look away. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Also, sorry to oh, our first my... two, Ardle and Judy. Here you go. Your time starts now. Mm. How long do you think the average tongue is, Judy? <laughs> Sherbet now, please. <laughs> Three inches. <laughs> <laughs> tongue out, please. <laughs> And then we're going to dry the tongue out with the fan. Mm. Yeah, that's a lemon. Mm. Mm. Keep it out, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, good start. Pardon? It's, mm -hmm. just, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. How long was it? So far you've done four and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. It's longest time wins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's in, it's in. Fuck this. <laughs> well done, Judy. Sorry for any mess I may have left. Yeah, it's only a little, little pool at the bottom. Incredible. Was this both of your, your favourite task? I didn't uh, mind it, actually. <laughs> I mean, sherbet, lovely. Lemon, lovely. Lollies, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just proud of myself that I could still communicate with my tongue out. Yes. Oh, the standard is wonderful. Do you want to hear the nasal Please. communication now? Could it be? was better than our Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's crystal clear, isn't it? It's crystal clear. <laughs> OK, unfortunately, you do have to see more. It doesn't get any better, so here we go. This time, it's sorry to Bridget and Chris. Still stay out. Please don't cover your tongue. <laughs> Just one lemon. Was that licking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Was that licking? Mm-hmm. That was licking. When I blow the whistle, please. How's it feeling? <laughs> stop whenever you want, Bridget. I don't want to stop. Oh! Ah, now, I think it went in. Mm. It did go in, didn't it? <laughs> I am going to stop the clock. Are you going to keep it in or keep it out? <laughs> oh! Just ashamed, mainly. <laughs> I mean, your attempt, Bridget, put me in mind of the film Turner and Hooch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's what I was going for, yeah. Chris, I just wanted to acknowledge your technique, which was the hummingbird dab. Yes. He wasn't taking luxurious licks <laughs> of lemons. He dabbed. He moved on. <laughs> it did escalate severely after about five minutes, but, yeah, the start put him in good stead, and he is, at this stage, the leader. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Because the, and there wasn't much flop until later on, but when it came... <laughs> he looked like he was icing a cake with it. <laughs> Don't try this at home or at work. Don't try it. <laughs> God. There's one almighty tongue left. Step forward and further apologies to Sophie Duca. Oh, God. Uh -huh. How's that? Uh -huh. Oh, dear. 
Oh, that's awful. Uh, yeah, no, me too. Uh, We've reached the 10 minute mark. Is the tongue tired? Yeah. Uh-huh. You know how many muscles you've got in your tongue? Seven. It's eight. You can stop at any time. Uh, oh, no. It's a quarter of an hour now. Which is the worst one? We're not making you do this. It's screaming out now. Let's try that up, shall we? Thank you. No, I'm covered in spit. You're covered in spit? Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, you are. There's not going to be much lolly left thing. <laughs> you may have, may have finished. Do you think you finished? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 26 minutes. How do you feel now? <laughs> I don't think I know who I am if I'm not licking those things <laughs> Incredible work. Do you think? I mean, it actually made me physically gip. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Frederick from Sweden's going to call me back now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, she only really stopped because she finished the goods. <laughs> the, lolly, <laughs> the, the, the goods were in a pile on the floor and above a lake of flop. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the most impressive, useless talents I've ever seen. Thank well, you the so points much. go according to the times. It's very simple. Judy, you showed grit, but you only get one point for your five minutes. Idle, six minutes, 42 points. Bridget, 12 minutes, three points. Chris, 14 and a half minutes, four points. But with 26 minutes, 20, five points. To <laughs> Sophie Judy. Oh, okay. Please, can we see anything else? Of course we can. And as that door closes, another one opens. Walk through this doorway wearing the longest shoes and the biggest hat. This door? Yes. It's not a very big door. You must open the door and walk through this doorway wearing your long shoes and big hat within the next 20 minutes. Bonus point for the most stylish. I mean, how am I supposed to know what he considers stylish? That's, that's annoying. Your time starts now. Well, I'm just going to go and find a hat and some shoes. Oh, OK. Where, where will I find a big hat and large shoes? Uh, I don't know. OK. You're no help. I don't think there's anything in here. I think it's quite stylish to be um, in mourning. It really is. It really is. My sister went to St Martin's uh, fashion school. She, I think she'd be really pleased with that. I need loads of shoes right. and loads of hats and I want to take them all together mm. and then wear it and just pop a little flower in there and stuff like that. All right, I'll gather some hats and shoes. Yes, please. Where, where can I meet you? I'll be relaxing, sitting down. <laughs> I just need a bit of help getting into my, my new shoes. Ah. I take a lot of pride in the things that I make. Think it through. Ah. Quite long, Ardell. Yeah, they are long. Actually, could you push that in a bit? Can't get it out of my hair, though. I might need a colander or something on top of this. God, you took a bit of a while, didn't you? I've done my best. I've got a bag of shoes. OK. Can I hang them on the door? Can you hang what on the door? The shoes. What do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> you know, there are some familiar things for someone who's been watching the whole series. Judy. Incredibly lazy getting you to do all the work. Always. Sophie's obsession with death. Bridget um, working away, <laughs> baffling herself at one point with her own question. <laughs> and Ardle just silently working away. But I'm a bit confused. Yes. Where was Chris? It's a good question, Greg. Well, it's an easy task, isn't it? Make a big hat and craft some long shoes. It's an arts and crafts task with endless possibilities. <laughs> and yet, here is Chris Ramsey. <laughs> 
Oh, this is a horrible caravan. It's a hat, but it's a regular size hat. I'm not having that. Right. I can go places, can't I? You've had oh. two minutes. I can look other places. OK, I get it. Shed seems to be the first natural point of call. Yeah, if you want a hat. Is that a clue? Why is there no hats or shoes? Ah, OK, here we go. What was I doing? Oh, God, how many hats does one caravan need? I don't understand. All I've found is normal size hats and I can easily go through it with them, but I haven't got long shoes, I'm only a nine. Nine's all right. I don't understand what's happening. Oh, for God's sake. There's no fucking shoes! <laughs> what size shoe are you, Alex? I'm a ten. That's longer than mine. Can I have your shoes, please? You can walk away now, Chris. Thank God. Good day. <laughs> I think there's a degree of style in the cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> there's no fucking shoes. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. Times five. <laughs> so you literally thought the task was find a big hat. Yeah. yeah. And big shoes. Yeah. Do you want to see some people who actually did make long shoes and big hats? Yes. Okay, well, here is Judy please. with Ardlow Hanlon. <laughs> they're the right size. Yeah, yeah, they're a good, they're actually a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> you mind shutting the door behind you? Task complete. Task complete? Yeah. Great. Thanks, Huddle. Thank Lovely shoes and hat combination. OK. <laughs> oh, hi, Judy. Hi. You look nice. Thank you. <laughs> Are you worried about this wind? Not really, because it's classy. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Judy. I bet no one ain't designed that like this. <laughs> Let's talk about the style, because I think that, that Ardell really nailed a certain style, a period in time, mm -hmm. lost now, <laughs> where I think you went for a broader approach to fashion. I went for a kind of Vivian Westwood kind of look. You look, like, you look like you've been kicked through a charity shop. <laughs> <laughs> eclectic. Eclectic, eclectic individuality. Style. It's individual because it's... Everybody's style. Exactly. <laughs> and again, what I do by task is bring harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Truly the work of a mad woman. <laughs> Finally, it's Bridget and Sophie. They are long. Oh, madam. Style, what grace. Um, that's the most normal I've seen you walk all series. <laughs> <laughs> An intriguing character that you conjured up. Mm, uh, yeah. Uh, quite a small hat, 
But, man, those were big feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shoes were long with grief. OK, well, look, here they all are. I think you can see the relative sizes fairly Oh, easy. look at mine. Look at mine. <laughs> if I have to score it visually, then I... I think it's the only way. So OK. Whose is the smallest of the shoe hat combos? Well, Chris. Good, right. <laughs> One point to Chris. Fine. Yeah. And then, honestly, we've got to say Judy, yeah. Two points to you, Judy. Yeah. Whilst the, the shoe length is impressive, the hat length has been consumed by grief, so Sophie would be next. Right, Sophie gets three points. And there's more length to Bridget Christie. Well, that is true factually, yes. Well, that's what I'm going to call it, then. It's five to Bridget, four to Ardle, three to Sophie, two to Judy, one to Chris at this stage. <laughs> right. Style. Style point. I think in the Ardle's gone for quite a classic style. And the stance is... <laughs> it's very Milan. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that simplicity must win the day and Ardlo Hanlon takes it. OK, there we go. So it's one bonus point to Ardlo Hanlon. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at the scores. OK, well, I'm afraid, Judy, you are in last place again. <laughs> at the top this time, we have Bridget Christie with 17 points. stage you go for the final task of the show! <laughs> Who's going to read the task text? Ardlo Hanlon's going to read it out. Oh. Table tennis is own. <laughs> <laughs> Write down five things that fit the category given by the taskmaster. Your team will receive a point if both players write down the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. If someone from the other team writes the same word as you, that word must be wiped from the boards. Mm -hmm. And the team with the most points wins. You have 30 seconds to write your things and must be silent and still throughout. Chris and Ardle, and two of the team of three, please take your place on the circles. What's the first category, Greg? Things with four legs that are bigger than a rat. OK, you have 30 seconds to write five things, starting... Things with four legs that are bigger than a rat. Nice and big with your writing, please. <laughs> please stop writing! <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, Ardle, first of all, your five words. Five entirely correct answers. Right. Chris, did you have dog, zebra, donkey, giraffe, elephant? Show and tell. So I had dog... <gasps> Lovely. Elephant <gasps> and donkey. <laughs> Pretty good. All right. So, so far, three. So far, three. But if anyone on the other team has the same as them, they have to be wiped from the oh, board. OK. Are you all right, Judy? Judy looks nervous. <laughs> and, if you don't mind me saying, with good reason. <laughs> OK, Sophie, please show and tell. I had donkey, dog, cat, Labrador, <laughs> and nice table. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, that means the donkeys and the dogs need to be wiped off, as does the cat, Chris. So, just to recap, at the moment, the boys still have Sorry. one point with the elephant. We're hoping that Judy's written either Labrador or a nice table for Sophie's sake. <laughs> Judy, please show us and tell us what you've written. Frog. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbit. Dog. Cat. <laughs> I guess they could be classed as legs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a special birds in Jamaica. Yeah. Oh, the, <laughs> the four-legged Jamaican birds? Yes. Yeah. I, I, if I'm honest with you, I'm, I'm back with frogs still. <laughs> They're so the, much bigger than a rat, a frog. The Jamaican... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's right, you can get big ass frogs, okay, but well, it's academic. Wipe everything off. The boys have one point so far. Are you ready? Okay. Category two. Purple things. Yes, it's purple things. You have 30 <laughs> seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> Go. <laughs> yes, it's not a bad selection from my view. Purple things. Just think of all the purple things you know. <laughs> wow. Lovely stuff. OK. Hello, Ardle again. Please tell me your five purple things. OK. Aubergine, followed yes. by plum. Yep. Knob. 
damson and one of the tweenies. Right. <laughs> okay, the, the big five are there. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, please show and tell us you're fine. Ah, I got all the same ones. <laughs> no points yet. Girls. I wrote blueberry. Because they're purple. They're not blue. They are. It's in the name. <laughs> Lavender. Purple. Greg's face sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely accurate. Uh, Ribena. Palmer violets. They're definitely purple. Please wipe Ribena from your boards. Bridget, what have you got? Aubergine. <sighs> Rain. Oh. Rain. <laughs> That is lovely. Veins, plum, grape. Oh, they're in oh. sync, but with the wrong teams. I'm afraid, again, it's zero points and it stays 1-0 to the boys with one round to go, but you might as well clap them anyway. <laughs> OK, OK, it's the final round. Let's hear the final category. Things that are nice to put in your mouth. <laughs> 30 seconds starting. Lovely selection of things that I can see. Stop. Well, I think we're in for a treat here, Greg. Oh, <laughs> we certainly are. Hello, Ardle. What are your five Hi, things that are again. nice in your mouth? Uh, yes, I started with thumb. Oh. Ice lolly. Mm, lovely. Blanket. <laughs> cigar. Mm. And flute. You pop it in, don't you? <laughs> pop it in the flute. Pop that. <laughs> <laughs> A blanket? <laughs> well, they might not be funny. Let's find out <laughs> if Chris is in tune with his teammate. Chris, what are the all five things? Lollipop. Ooh. And, er, uh, Tom. Tom, <gasps> OK. So Tom. the boys, the boys at the moment have two points. Two, Lolly and Tom. Three all together at this stage. But Judy has written some things. Judy, what have you written? I've put body parts. <laughs> <laughs> food. <laughs> air. <laughs> Fingers and toes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're looking at five points here. Yeah, and the thing is, obviously, I know it's fingers and toes, but body parts is separate to fingers and toes. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> How so? Because it's at the side and at the bottom, body parts is in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> the fingers are on the side. They need to get three of these to draw, four to win. Bridget, what have you got? Custard, <laughs> fingers, hey. yes. fish fingers, uh, sweets, and then I rubbed the last one out because I, I, I... Penis. Yeah, it, it was that. Uh, it was a penis. <laughs> yeah, I would say Judy also wiped out penis. What? Yeah, they yeah, both had penis. Yeah, I penis So well. did I. Oh, I know. I was, I was gagging is... to put it back. Right. <laughs> there will be no points for imagined words. <laughs> The game is done. We'll add it all up. We'll see how it's affected the final scores. Please come and join me. <laughs> well done. All right? Yes, they were in sync, sort of. Elephant, thumb, lolly mm. and fingers over there. So the score was 3-1. I guess the boys win the task, so they get five points. Yes. How many points do you want the ladies? Three on this occasion. OK, so it's three points to the girls, five to the boys! <laughs> And that has affected the scores, you won't be surprised to hear. They've gone up. <laughs> uh, Judy, last place, with ten points. With twice as many points at the top, it's Bridget Christie with 20 points! <laughs> Bridget Christie wins! Please head up for your holdable hall! <laughs> so, what have we learned today? We've learned it's not about the size of the tongue, it's about the quality of the flop. It's not about the size of the hat. It's about understanding that you have to make a hat. <laughs> it's not about the museum tour. It's about avoiding the man with a table tennis bat above his head. And finally, birds do not have four legs. <laughs> we have to go now, but tonight's winner is the wonderful Bridget Christie! <laughs>
for more Taskmaster, subscribe now.